In our address today, I would like to reflect with you on protest actions. So maybe bring to mind some of the recent protest actions you have witnessed on the news and relive some of your experiences or thoughts about those protest actions. So we are familiar with protest actions around the globe. The recent protests such as Black Lives Matter have hit home to us quite hard. And what about the Me Too movement? A surprise for all of us that women's rights could be recognised in this way. There have been protest actions throughout the Eurozone previously as people react against austerity, me austerity measures imposed by their government. And as we reflect back from this point in history, we remember the protest actions that led to what we now call the Arab Spring. Maybe we feel a bit grumpy about some of the protest actions in Sydney when a government doing its best to protect its people had to then put up with people disobeying health orders to protest the very action that could save their lives. So South Africa, the country that birthed me, is only who she is today because of protest action. From the free Mandela protest action campaigns overseas to the well-organized non-violent protest actions in the early days of apartheid, South Africa today is only able to boast one of the world's most sophisticated constitutions and its narrative of human rights precisely because protest actions changed the landscape of South African history. The Harvard Law Scholar Cass Sunstein called the South African Constitution the most admirable in the history of the world. Australia, my adoptive country, has also been changed significantly through protest actions. Today, we have marriage equality. And this is thanks to protest action, not in December 2017, where more than 15,600 people assembled to support the yes vote for marriage equality. But this protest action dates all the way back to the year of my birth, 1978, when people who identify as LGBTQIA+, launched what we now call the Sydney Mardi Gras. Australia has a very long way to go and a very long road to travel before we can call her relationship with Indigenous people anything close to just. However, protest action such as those led by Eddie Marbo, played an important role in land rights. His protest action led to the High Court case that overturned the lie of Terra Nullis. And today I would like to thank you for your protest action week by week. Up until the current lockdown, we've been faithfully participating in the Eucharist, sharing bread and wine, and giving thanks to God for his sustenance of our earth. Your participation in the Eucharist, week by week, is gentle, persistent, faithful protest action. And I'd like to thank you for your continual faithfulness to this protest action in the Feast of the Eucharist. The first question to ask is, why is the Eucharist protest action? In analysing the text from John 6 today, the temptation exists to over-spiritualise its meaning and focus exclusively on the spiritual aspects of sharing bread and wine. The Eucharist feast, hinted here, 
in John chapter 6. Yet, protest action is embedded within the heart of this text. Clear reference is made to the manner our spiritual ancestors ate in the desert when they were fleeing the powers of Egyptian oppression. So right at the heart of the Eucharist feast is the memory of the Passover. The Passover in early Jewish history was always a festival fraught with political overtones as Jewish people remembered how God freed them from oppression and slavery. In any protest action, there are at least three components. There's protest action for whom? In other words, on whose behalf is the protest action being staged for? Second dimension is against what? Protest action always objects to something. And thirdly, protest action offers a different vision of a preferred future. So in other words, protest action for what? Protest action around the globe has taken different forms. Some protest action has been non-violent. Some protest action has been admirable, as in students leading the climate change action against our current policies. Other protest action has witnessed high levels of anger and aggression, as can be seen what happened in Sydney about two weeks ago. In contrast, the Eucharist as protest action is persistently gentle and consistent. There is no destructive anger, although there is the breaking of bread. There is no bloodshed, although there is the consistent call for the downfall of the powers, whomsoever they may be. And the up and the call for the uprising of the peasants. So if the Eucharist is protest action, on whose behalf is this protest action for? The Eucharist as protest action is for people who are hungry for life in all its fullness, the commitment that Jesus offers to each of us in John 10 verse 10b. I have come that you may have life and have life in all its fullness. For some people, this hunger for life in all its fullness may be physical hunger. For others, the hunger may be a deep desire for meaning and purpose. So the Eucharist as protest action is always for the vulnerable who come to Jesus and say, Sir, give us this bread always. These words remind us of a similar dialogue in John's Gospel in chapter 4, where the Samaritan woman says to Jesus, Sir, give me this water always. The Samaritan woman is a symbol for whom the Eucharist as protest action represents. She's a vulnerable person, someone who is excluded and welcome and unwelcome. The Eucharist bread is broken for the life of the world. All are invited to share at the table. All are welcomed. None are excluded. These moments of Eucharist action protest a world where only some are welcomed and only some are invited. In our church, the Eucharist table is the table of the Lord, and all who desire to receive God coming to them in the form of bread and wine are welcome to do so. And this is because the Eucharist is for the vulnerable of the world. The Eucharist is also an objection to the brokenness of the world where some have too much 
and others have too little. We live in a crazy world where 26 people own as much wealth as the billions who make up the rest of the planet. So if, pro if the Eucharist is protest action for the vulnerable of the world and all who desire life in all its fullness, what does the Eucharist protest against? What does it object to? The Eucharist, as protest action, objects to a world of injustice where some have too much and some have too little. In John's Gospel, the people say to Jesus, Our ancestors ate manna in the wilderness, as it is written, He gave them bread from heaven to eat. And this reference to manna is relevant. As you know, the people of God escape Egypt. Egypt is a place of oppression, a symbol of a place where life was sucked out of God's people as they were enslaved to a system of greed, symbolized by the pyramids. In Egypt, they suffered because some had too much and others had too little. God frees them. They are in the desert. While in the desert, God teaches them a new system of economics and government, a system that is not based on greed, with a few having too much and others enslaved to work. God rains down manna. The people collect it. This teaches them that everything comes from God and all is a gift. All comes from heaven. When they collect it, they will learn that work is a dignified activity where people work with God to mend creation. When they collect it, some will gather more and others will gather less. But those who gather more will not have too much, and those who gather less will not have too little. And so what God teaches them is a profound system of a new econo economy that will give life to all God's people. Life for all God's people is God's vision for the world. It is this vision of sharing that the Eucharist action protests for. The Eucharist is protest action. What is the vision that it hopes for? The Eucharist as protest action envisions a world where all have enough and all are treated with the dignity that is their birthright as people created in the image of God. The most important reference to the manna story in the desert is not so much the manna that the people ate and then died afterwards anyway. The highlight of the story of God's people living in the wilderness, having escaped from oppression in Egypt, is the vision of God dwelling with God's people. In the desert, as they escaped slavery and moved to a new place of freedom and living as whole people, embracing fullness of life in a land flowing with milk and honey, the journey through the desert included the tabernacle symbolizing God's presence at the heart of God's people. And that is the vision of the new exodus, the new creation, the new world that John calls us to. In John chapter 1, we hear of the word that was God, that was with God in the beginning. And we hear towards the end of chapter 1 how that word took on flesh, and tabernacled among us. In other words, God is one with God's people. And the dignity of being human is precisely this, that we find our true selves inside God and know that God is in us even as we are in God. 
The word abide captures this fully. Who we are as people are people who abide in God, who celebrate the marriage of the holiness of our humanity with the holiness of God's divinity. So if the Eucharist is protest action, it is protest action for the inalienable dignity of being human, a humanity whose true flavor is found in celebrating its unity with divinity. The beautiful thing about the Eucharist is that God achieves this vision for us and through us and with us. As Jesus explains to his audience, our task is simply to believe it. And so the next time we take bread and wine, God willing, it will be soon, we can celebrate our true identity of being found in God and finding God in us. As the bread dissolves and becomes one with our body, we remember that our true identity is being dissolved similarly in the being of God. And so today, I would like to thank you. I would thank you for your protest action, for coming faithfully to the Eucharist feast. Thank you for being part of a protest action that stands against a world where few have too much and so many have too little. Thank you for being a partner with God in the Eucharist, in the Eucharistic protest action. And thank you for your work with God in mending creation. Let us pray for the world.